never fails as soon as I turn the recording on, a siren goes off in the back. I don't know if it actually comes through the microphone, but we'll see when it all comes through. Anita, I have the same cup of coffee I had this morning for the cataloging committee meeting, which is okay. I actually like my four hour old coffee. Hmm. I'm glad that yours is fresh though. <laughs> Kind of that time in the afternoon when any kind of coffee whatsoever seems appropriate. Unless you have the luxury of siesta, but I don't know. I don't think any of us do. Yes, even chewy coffee. As a fan of espresso beans I, with chocolate on them, I, I wholeheartedly agree with that. Okay. So we are just about at two. <laughs> Karen, it's my tired time of day too. I don't know. I don't even know what days are anymore. So it might be my tired like week or something. I don't know. Here we are. We never left. <laughs> I don't think. Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, I'm sure that we have some people coming in later. So I will be looking back and forth and admitting people. But right now, for those of you who are here, if you could put your name into the chat window just to make sure that we have a record of you being here so that I can send out appropriate LAUs after the fact, that would be appreciated. appreciated. I would be appreciative. And then I'll uh, give you a little bit of information about things that are upcoming and then we'll get started into our topic for today. Heidi, I think you just put a barcode in. <laughs> now I wanna track that down and see exactly what it is. <laughs> We all know what she's doing. She's copy pasting things. <laughs> Just, oh yes, fire replacements. So much copy pasting. If you came in after I announced this, if you we're in the process of putting names into the chat box right now so that I can have a documentation of you being here and get the appropriate email sent out after the fact. So while we're going through that, I do want to um, let you know of some upcoming things. Of course, um, we have another cataloging circle in two weeks that is going to be um, dealing with conjoined items. Next week, however, if you have the opportunity this year, because of COVID-19, the Evergreen International Conference was canceled, supposed to be in Atlanta. And in place of it, there is an Evergreen International Online Conference that is free to attend. And so if you are interested in that, you can find information at the uh, website, which I'll put into the chat box real quick. And once you get there, you'll have to go to the conference tab. I don't remember the exact extension for that. But this, this will get you to the International Projects website. And then if you go to conference, it's called 2020 Online Conference, and you can still go and register actually up until the end of Monday. So it is going to be a Zoom conference, which means that... Um, there are some seat limitations, so they're not closing registration, but even if you get registered, there may be some, um, some issues getting into it. But um, Monica made the point here, and she is correct, 
that all the sessions from that conference are also going to be posted on YouTube uh, after the fact. Um, on July the 7th, this is not something that has gone out to any of the lists yet, but we will be having a Training Tuesday webinar, which um, the Training Tuesdays, it's essentially content that would have been presented at the Evergreen Indiana Annual Conference, um, but because that was canceled, now we're trying to get those presenters uh, to be able to share the information that they were going to. So uh, Jocelyn Lewis from the State Library is going to be leading or presenting on July the 7th for subject headings and uh, genres. And then on August the 4th, um, what would have been a training Tuesday is going to be the summer workshop. And it's going to kind of be led by Jennifer Steffi and Mary Emrich, Mary Kay Emrich, um, and they're going to be talking about monographic parts. And then there's going to be some expanded contents for that as well. Um, Monica, I know you were in the meeting and plus you're waving your hands. Did you have something more that you wanted to say about that? You can turn on. You, you Sorry about that. I, that. That was my jazz hands because of the monographic oh. parts. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to be talking about monographic parts so much. So there's also going to be one of these sessions is going to be on monographic parts. Hi, Jennifer. We were just talking about you. Did you hear your name? Oh, yes. I'm just so excited about monographic parts. Yay! <laughs> I don't know if there's like some level of sarcasm in this or not. Oh, no. Ask my okay. children. I'm never sarcastic. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm, I, I am actually excited about it because what I, I want to, like, what I want to do is, like, do a screen of, you know, where it says any unassigned, un unassigned item and have ominous music behind it. Like, <laughs> no, dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Don't click here. <laughs> yeah. Except for, unless your you. library has not assigned parts to that item, in which case, please click here. This is exactly what you want, but you won't actually know. Yeah. So yes, anyway, yes. we'll be having this conversation for the next two months. Um, perhaps yeah. not ad nauseum, but it may seem like that to some people. We'll be talking about monographic parts a lot. Um, so those are coming up. There's uh, some other things I have scheduled the next round of catalog training um, and I actually said these dates just a little while ago and I have promptly I think that this is the biggest problem with technology for me is that I rely on it enough that I don't like remember things because I know I know that I can look them up later I mean assuming that the internet and works and we have electricity but so basic cataloging is going to be on July the 22nd, and then uh, I'm kind of sticking with the split day for the advanced cataloging, and so that's going to be the 23rd and 24th. If you have people on staff or you are somebody that needs to um, take the classes to re-up your skills or, or whatever, there are many different reasons why people need to, to take the classes either for the first time or again. So we are going to get started, but I think there's something else that I needed to mention. There are some people that just came in. Make sure that when you are in here, you put your name in the chat box so that um, I can make sure that everybody gets their appropriate LEUs. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with problem items. Um, this is kind of one of those things. This is, this is the actual can of worms. The problem items where you say, well, we don't want to open a can of worms. This is the can of worms and it's been opened. So I, put out the um, the questionnaire. Whoa. Oh, I don't know what this is doing. It needs to stop that right now. We're going to go right back there. And then we're going to, pardon me. 
y. There, and it's not moving. I put out the questionnaire asking, so what are some examples of items that have caused issues when you get the cataloging and didn't get a whole lot of um, response. And, and the ones that we did are kind of the usual suspects, that, but I think that they are usual suspects because they keep being problems. Um, now there are some different things in here. When I was, I actually um, talked to Lynn, who she's over there and pointing, she's over in her office. Um, I was like, what is a wonder book? And I'm assuming it is something that has like the little button you press on it and it plays. What is it? Okay. Somebody, yes, Monica. It's a, um, I mean, yeah, you're kind of right. It's basically, a, it's a regular copy of the book where they've attached basically an MP3 player. Um, and it, uh, it so it's kind of like a play away. Isn't we, there, is there another version of that that has a different name? Vox, I believe. That's what it is, Vox, that's right. I, I was thinking. I, my library doesn't have any Vox. My library has Wonder Books. And I know Wonder Books, one of the things that they have is, you can read along, but they also have like discussion questions um, to talk about the book. I don't know if Vox has that or not. Do they, do they like talk to you? Do, do the, I, I think, I, I can't like remember. Like somebody the, asks you the questions? Yes, because I think they oh. read through the end and, the, and like you can set, the, there's a setting where you can turn it to, do you want to have the discussion or do you want to be read to or whatever. Interesting. Yeah. I could see where that would be a problem though, as far as cataloging. They're also a problem to shelve because they didn't make them, they, they did not produce them very well. So like they're, they're like, it's like a triangular piece that's added to the corner of the book, but they didn't cut out the like pages or the um, cover there. So you can't close the book regular. So they don't stand very well on a shelf either. That's not relevant to us, but it's just an extra annoyance. I'm going to have to look these up because that, sounds really annoying to me. Shelving books is an issue for me anyway. So these are some of the other, then launch pads. Um, and I'm just, I'm just drawing, I can see actually what a launch pad is. If somebody has a better description other than that thing that I'm not describing, um, I would appreciate. I mean, it's, it's like an iPad, but it has limited like apps on it. You actually select a catalog of it or a collection of apps to go on it. Um, and that does come through um, the Play Away company. Is that correct? Find that is, Away World. Okay. Um, and, but the, the other thing that makes them tricky in addition to, and I see Jennifer asking about the preloaded apps. Yes, they are yeah. preloaded. But the other thing that makes it tricky is that there's also launch pads that instead of apps, they have video or they have oh, yeah. comic books, um, all preloaded, but they're on a tablet. So they're, they're doing that as well as the views, or are they doing that in place of the view? Did they get rid of the views? Okay. So I think that this kind of brings up the whole, well, not the whole, but one aspect of these problem items is that there are these cool content packages. But the package itself, the way that it, it's packaged to go, keeps changing. And but it is so integral to the thing itself that it requires the records to change pretty significantly as well, because it's not just the content that, that you're putting in there, um, not, not just the intellectual content, but the actual, then the physical description of the player or the whatever. Um, another thing that was put in here was book packs, and I'm curious to hear what you have to say about book packs. What are the different iterations of those? Because I can think of several use cases for a book pack. 
I don't know about anyone else, but in my case, Bookpack is a brand name, just like Launchpad. And okay. it's another product from Findaway um, where they have, where it's a, a playaway um, device coupled with one or more books of that. So it's a read along thing. Oh, that's right. I'd forgotten about those. Yep. And they come in like their clamshell case or whatever they're using at this point. And, and Anita says they reuse the ISBN. Can you explain that a little bit? I mean, I, I'm familiar with re, reusable, reusable ISBNs, but what specifically they're doing, Anita, when they replace the item with a, a different content? Labeled as second edition. Oh. So in this case, we're, so if we have a launch pad, which you said right there, and there's this collection of apps and there's an ISBN that's associated with this thing, but then they replace the apps, which essentially makes it different. I mean, 100% makes it different content, but it's the same ISBN. Oh, that's bad practice. <laughs> so... I don't want to get too far ahead here, but are there other things beside this? And, and we will get to the point where we talk to um, books with CDs because that there's a specific addition to that that we'll go into in the next part of this. But are there other items, and we're going to talk about DVDs and Blu-ray, and, and, and as I said, when we're talking about monographic parts, and we're going to be talking about that so much in the next couple months, um, that's going to play into the the first one, DVDs and Blu-ray, and then we'll talk about different ways to handle the books with the CD um, as well. But are there other items that cause you particular consternation? Realia is like so many different things, Monica. <laughs> what specifically are you talking about? And there are so many different things that are problems. <laughs> there are. <laughs> I don't know. I, I mean, mostly some of the things we've already discussed, you know, um, um, launch pads and stuff, but we've, you know, we've got Kindles. We have bike locks at my library, ah. um, scanners, um, you know, various and then and then I've got um, we have these packs at my library they call them discovery kits where they have one or more books with them but mm -hmm. they also have like toys or puzzles or whatever so the realia inside those kits can be um, tricky too and Jennifer brought up also uh, Local, local genealogical stuff. Um, they can be interesting. Are, my experience with them is yes, that they were very interesting to look at and to read and even to um, describe, to catalog them, but they're really time consuming too because you actually do unless you're, you're doing something kind of on the fly, you almost have to read the whole thing or at least do some really in-depth skimming to know what the heck you're talking about, what you're describing, and then to actually create that record. So I, in my experience, more than it being, well, more than it being difficult, it's just time consuming. And then the problem comes in, is there enough time to give it the treatment that it really deserves to get into the catalog? And I think that that is an issue with a lot of the realia as well, is that in order to give it the treatment that, that you think that it deserves is, is the time involved in it. Um, well, I think one of the benefits with Realia 
um, is that basically you're probably going to be the only person cataloging that. <laughs> right. So for your like bike locks, you really just do whatever it takes to get the job done to make it findable in the catalog, um, how you guys need to find it. Um, if you're putting a bunch of puzzles and DVDs and stuff together, and I mean, again, basically that's going to be, I know we talk about how all the records are shared in the consortium, but really that's going to be your record because mm -hmm. no one else is going to have that exact same mixture of things. Um, so, you know, in that sense, then the pressure is off a little bit for doing perfect cataloging because um, you're really you cataloging for, for your, your people and not everyone else in the whole consortium. Right. Mm, I'm going to, I'm going to go forward. I have something to say, shockingly enough, but, um, so we've talked a little bit about the challenges. Some of the things that we're mentioning, and we're going to definitely, we're going to circle back into those things. That's kind of the point of doing this as a round table, because you can like circle back. Um, but some of the issues that were raised as now, and these go actually kind of in order with the things that were listed there. So the DVD and Blu-ray, are, are they going on the same record or are we using parts? I'm going to say generally the answer to that at this point is parts. Um, but that's, that's, uh, that's not to like just brush that off at all because that's a more involved um, conversation. This next one I thought though was really good point to bring up. So you're doing this, but you also, you want this to display correctly in the catalog. If it is a book, you want it to show up as a book. If, it, if it's a video disc of some sort, you want to show it, have it show up correctly. If it is something else, you want it to show up and how does that happen in there? So I do want to uh, put over in the chat, if I can, I finally have like big monitors and I find that it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if I have big monitors at all because I still have too many things open and I lose things all the time. Um, but I'm going to put this from, just so that you have it, there's a lot more information here than, than it per pertains to what we're talking about right now. But I always tend to look to the catalog or, cataloging training manual, but I think the better resource to have open all the time is the procedures manual. And especially when we're talking about these different types of items, and actually if you just go right before this is the section on um, monographic parts as well as it pertains to combo packs and things. And I'm gonna put that in over here too. So, and, and it's, it's worth just taking some time and going through there. Every single time I, I read it, I find something I was like, oh yeah, that makes sense. I don't know why I wasn't already doing that. Why did I like spend half an hour trying to figure this out when the workflow is actually written out here for me? So um, I would encourage you to, look through those things. They, there are record, a place in here, records for realia. It's not going to give you all the answers. Th there is no place in the, this entire world that will give you every definitive answer for what they're doing. And that's why you are a cataloger. Um, but there's some great information to get you going in the direction. And it's right here with Evergreen Indiana. So I'm going to hush for a second. The other thing I wanted to bring up was cover art. How are you guys handling cover art? Do you even care about it if you are putting kits in or things like that? And, and then if somebody also wants to speak to how you're getting your icons to show up, I know what the answer is, but I talk too much. Bob probably doesn't like me recently. I've probably <laughs> been sending him pictures to attach to records. So like, if you want, you can find our ghost hunting kit and you can see a picture of it. Um, also some of our lawn games and 
I'm trying to get them to shrink so that they're not too big. But um, yeah. So Bob's I will been, tell you, Bob does like you. And Bob, Bob's Bob, attaching pictures for me. Right. He does like you and everybody else that's looking at your records really likes you. So yes, if you have an image for a record that is not showing cover art and there's no way that you can get it, you just send it to Bob. He's going to render. There's three different sizes. Um, you don't have to worry about the recommended size. Just send oh. it to Bob because he's going to actually send the highest quality that you have so that he can um, actually deal with those and then go forward. Yeah, I think and in the past week I've sent him the ghost yes. hunting kit, both sewing machines in the children's and and then I think I sent him the bongo drums and yes. some crochet hooks and lawn games like the big Yahtzee game. <laughs> Just make sure that you submit it as a help desk ticket so that, that we can actually track it rather than just sending it through email. Oh, no, I sent it to, through the help desk. Yeah, yeah. But definitely. And, and the more those kind of things are being added to collections, which, I mean, you guys are... Oh, well, I don't know if we can encourage it. I personally am encouraging. I think the more things that we can share, the better. Um, and the more somebody looking at the catalog can actually see what they're getting, the better. So that, and that's something that we um, will facilitate for you. And by we, I mean, Bob's doing that right now. So it's not we, it's Bob. But if he ever lets us do it, I can always resize things too. <laughs> My go-to for the icons and fields is that um, guide to materials, mm -hmm. types and icons. And I have it in cute little slide in plastic things like these. Mm -hmm. And they're right, at, they're right here beside me all the time. And I just latch onto them when I need to and, and then, you know, refer to them so I get the correct icons to display. So did you pull those out? Of, did you pull that out of the procedures manual yeah it, the title is guide to icon types in the evergreen indiana catalog it's somewhere out there i found it guide to material Talked types. About it in, in the cataloging committee so can you read the title again real quickly guide to material type icons in the evergreen indiana catalog okay so you're going to be using um your uh, zero, zero, 007 field, I believe, mm -hmm. to well, actually get those to show up correctly, but then to actually see what they are. I'm trying the power of Google right here, although I think I just did just see that somebody might have. Yeah, for each type, chat it thing. lists, like for cassette audio tapes, it, it lists the type as I, and then the 007, it tells you what, you know, you need to put in right. there to make sure that you get the right icon. And then it has a picture of the icon so you know you're right <laughs> at the end. But I use that a lot. It's I think I'm always right beside me. Dig and find that unless somebody else knows where that's housed right now. Okay, I'll dig and find it. Ah, thank you, Sarah. I'm not digging anymore. I appreciate it. But I am going to save it to my own drive. So just so you guys know, the, these cataloging circles are actually for me. Um, and, and, and I just am the student of one and you are all the teacher. <laughs> Let's be real about this. So thank you. Let me get this in here. Yeah, I'll just put it right through for the time being. And that is a, a really, that's a really handy resource. Thank you, Christy and Sarah. Okay. What are other questions that you, you have to deal with, questions or issues that you have to deal with as you are um, uh, 
approaching these items. And Nita has here, our biggest frustration at the moment is finding CERC modifiers that we like. Is that something that you have seen um, happen increasingly recently or um, do you think that it's a temporary thing because of COVID-19 or something that's gonna be ongoing? And do you have an example or two? Okay, last couple of years. Anita, does something spring to mind like an item type or some some type of collection maybe you're trying to? We're removing limit. Oh, okay. My, I have an example of that too, um, Anita and Ruth. Mm -hmm. uh, aside from recently during COVID-19, um, previously, um, trying to get a good CERC modifier for thing, I, I want to say launch pads, um, maybe something else, I can't remember, but some kind of um, device like that, that did what we wanted that I, I think I think my launch pads have a have a um, circ modifier of e-reader even though they're not e-readers because mm -hmm. that was what had the closest to what we wanted to do as far as circulation and fines and stuff. Do you think there needs to be more circulation modifiers? I'm reticent to say that. <laughs> I know. I, I know. We don't want any more than necessary, but but it does sometimes limit what our you know circulation and admin want to do with items. Mm -hmm. I think it definitely limits us on what we can do, but one. But one of the things is that's intentional because we mm -hmm. don't want there to be 50 million configurations and have it be confusing for patrons. So it's a tough balance. Yeah, I, I yes, it is. And I think that, that that's one of the one of the challenges of opening up the collections to um to non traditional things, I guess, although that's not really an accurate representation, but you, I hope that you know what I'm saying when I say non-traditional, not just books, but not just. The frustration for us is that it's also not an accurate description of the item when I have to use a circulation modifier that is inaccurate. Right. Yeah, that, that's exactly what I'm thinking is that when we open up the collections to these non-traditional items and then we try to use circulation modifiers for traditional items to fit these items, it's not representative of what they are. Um, and yep. and that is, that's confusing for, especially, I'm thinking actually more for staff since they have more exposure to the circulation modifiers anyway. Um, so the, the um, I guess we're trying to find the best fit and then at checkout, they just override the number of items when it pops up. Mm -hmm. They can override and say that they can go ahead and check it out. Because Anna said that seems to be about the best solution. Since you're never going to find circulation modifiers for everything weird. Right. But see, I, I hear what you're saying, Sarah, and I understand that. They don't see them. However, circulation staff do see them. And if they blurt out, oh, you already have two video discs or two gaming discs. That's true. If, if the staff actually uncovers the circ modifier to the phone. Well, like, that's what they're the, using yeah, for their course. that's what they're using for their information. Sure. And then the individual is standing there saying, I have never checked out a video game in my entire life. Right. We don't even have a, you know, so you get into and you can have a, a good discussion about it, but it's definitely uh, not describing what the patrons have and you can just really get into a, a mishmash there at the desk. I wonder if there would be some value in maybe doing an annual um, roundup of those things that 
people are um, trying to get circulating and, and those behaviors and maybe to do that an annual um, reevaluation of the CERC mods to see. Our library is certainly getting more diverse in the collection mm -hmm. and uh, checking out more and more of a particular type item to individuals than what is allowed on weird items or not non-book items on the CERC modifier list. And that is becoming really frustrating. Right. My con my concern, yes, it is my concern, and then you, I'll say it, and then you can take it for whatever it's worth. Um, and this is not a concern where I'm like, oh, I think something's terribly wrong. Like, it's just something that actually concerns me, is that there's that balance between, no, of course we don't want to add circulation modifiers willy-nilly. That just becomes just a ridiculous yeah. mess of everything but we also don't want staff to continue in a pattern of working around um, because then that becomes the mentality if this doesn't work I'm going to work around it and then it's not just us dealing with circulation modifiers it's dealing with all sorts of procedural things well this didn't work so I'm going I have this login that I can use to override that and it, it expands out into other things and so if there's a way to prevent that to make things work rather than to duct tape them um, then that makes the whole of everything work better and stay together longer. <laughs> the year-end statistics are certainly not accurate when they are not describing the type of items that you're circulating out of your library mm. for the state to see or the board to see here. Yeah. And, and that's a good point about the working around because if if we don't do a regular review of that, if everyone's working around, we might be all doing like the same sort of work around and then that's silly. Like then right. we should just create something that works rather than mm -hmm. everybody exactly. using a workaround. Right. Yeah. Which we can Good always point. come up with workarounds. I mean, and, and librarians <laughs> are notorious for duct tape working. I mean, we, we fix things and we, we don't speak up when things aren't going exactly the way that we think that they should we're like oh okay that's fine i'll just reroute myself and and there's a place for that there's a place to be accommodating and compromising but it's not always and i don't know that that it is here either especially i mean one of the the wonderful benefits of this open source software and community in this collaboration is that we can say, hey, this is not working. Let's change it. And which is obviously it's not just flipping a switch kind of change, but there is the possibility for change, which is great. Anyway, there's my little soapbox about open source too. But I, um, I'm writing down that annual review. I think that there's some definite possibility in that. I think we should be reviewing stuff pretty regularly anyway, but just to keep us all, me, honest. So what else with this, with what we have here and then this is, this is a kind of, I purposefully didn't come up with a bunch of use cases because this is one of those topics where it, it's, it can be nothing and, and we've just come up with workarounds as we've already described a little bit, or it could be everything. Nothing's working, everything is a problem. Um, but so what are those other things? And I'm also, I'm also writing down find a way that company <laughs> because it seems like they <laughs> I get what they're doing and they do they make some cool products obviously otherwise nobody would be buying them and circulating them but they're also making these things specifically for libraries and to schools schools to a certain extent but libraries are the ones that really buy into this and to not 
have some level of understanding of the way that these things are cataloged seems to me to be a little, I don't know, they've been around long enough. You'd think that they'd have gotten a clue a little bit, but maybe I'm just making assumptions I shouldn't. So anyway, I've written down find a way world. If I find somebody to talk to about their cataloging and practices, I'm going to talk to them. Nothing's going to happen from that, but I'm still going to do it. <laughs> they do have some of their own mark records. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I guess I did know. You can import them. They send them along with their stuff. Yeah. What are other issues? I'm going to keep bringing up this one topic until somebody says, never mention this again, Ruth. And if you're the person that says that, I'm going to then cite you forever and say, this is the person that said, never mention this again. So one of the things that was brought up were books with CD. Um, is anybody at all using conjoined items with these? Is anybody in this room, virtual room, using conjoined items for anything? Okay. I'm <laughs> no, no, no. Ruth. Um, yes. <laughs> you wouldn't know this. Uh, it might, no, my answer is no, too. Do not do No, not I know. No, I know your answer is no. I already knew that. <laughs> I saw the look on your face. I was like, yeah. yeah. Um, you wouldn't know this because you were busy being a director at the time. But a few years ago, um, at the cataloging committee, mm -hmm. um, I brought up, and I don't know why I brought this up, but we were just, I was discussing, I was adding or had recently added um, Kindles that we, we had gotten some Kindle fires and we were purchasing uh, books to live on those. Right. And um, we still have, we still have the Kindles. We're not adding more books to them. Right. Um, but at the time I brought up to the committee, brought this up to the committee and I don't remember what we were talking about, but the, the idea of using conjoined items at that time for those books that are on those Kindles mm -hmm. came up and basically everybody in the room said, that's too much work. I would just go with using an enhanced 505, which is what I had done anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, I don't know how to use them. I don't know if anybody does, but I don't know if anybody knows what to use them for either. Go ahead, Sarah. Well, I'll say that we had an intern who was doing cataloging for us at Sullivan Months, the local genealogy library. And um, she was trying to use them for, I don't even remember what, it, it's a genealogy library. They have some interesting stuff. <laughs> right. And, but it was like a logical thing where it was like, oh, I think they were, it was like bound together things where... Right you know it was like a bunch of pamphlets that had all been bound together and, and that's what it that's pamphlets. what it theoretically should be used for right. yeah so right. it was like it made perfect sense to use conjoined items and I can't remember but she was like she you know was researching how you use conjoined items in evergreen and trying to figure out how to make it work and she tried it and she was like this is super confusing it <laughs> is like it doesn't make it clear to a user no how these items are connected and so this seems like it is it like it just it's a nice idea but the interface doesn't convey things well enough that it's like worth all the extra work to do it yes was, yes i think that's the thing included yes i think that they are they definitely have a great uh use um i know that one of the libraries around here were uh, putting things back they were putting things back into their collection and they were trying to describe each of the items from uh, the perspective of insurance needing to know exactly what was in all of those kits this never would have come up for us un unless you have a fire right so they found out how to do conjoined because they wanted to have total mark records for the items that they were putting in to the kit and they would be independently searchable. And the problem is you get all that work done 
and it shows that you have multiple copies of it. It's ugly in the interface. It's a foreign object. And so they were so frustrated by the time they uh, saw what is showing up in the catalog that they just backed out of that and they have maintained a mark record with a dummy item in it so that it isn't deleted out of there and that will show that they own one but it's in a kit yeah i think that from from my um academic experience because i've never used them in production um the idea is cool although yes. there are there are some philosophical questions that come into it as well um that go into circulation statistics and things like that. But the way that it is presented to, to the patrons really is kind of, well, it's very confusing. And yes. even, even the way that you then circulate them can be confusing. Um, Cause they all have, they all have barcode. I mean, theoretically, they don't all have a barcode. They could have barcode anyway. Okay. And for the Sullivan months, that wasn't even an issue because the, their collection doesn't circulate at all. Right. But it was just, it was just a matter of the interface made it so confusing to figure out, like, to understand what it was trying to tell you about these items. Right. It was just like, this is a mess. This isn't worth it. It seems like if for conjoined items, it just needs a lot of development before it's actually would be. Yeah. Okay. My, my first conjoined item I tried was one of our science kits. It's um, the boom whacker, and then it had a CD with it. Mm -hmm. So I, the CD's catalog separate, and it's conjoined to the kit, which is the boom whackers themselves. I don't like that it displays the foreign item, item at the top. And why does it have to be called foreign? Because it sounds weird. <laughs> right. But, because developers said so. I know. And so that was my first attempt. And then my second attempt was we had two, or we had a book club that wanted to read, um, oh darn, name just flew out of my head. Anyway, I created a book club box and it had 15 regular print, three large print, and then one audio CD of the book. And so I conjoined them all into the um, the book club box or whatever I call mm -hmm. it, crate. I don't know, I'm not sure exactly what I called it. Um, and it was just weird because people were like, well, you have all those items. Well, no, I don't have 16 copies of the book, 15 of them are in the book club. Right, right. So that was very confusing. I think that that's the confusing thing is that it shows that there are so many things, but they only go with somebody as a, as a unit, as a whole unit. And so, but as far as in this going and then into the, um, so there's that confusion on the patron side, but then do, should they all count as separate circulations? In some cases, yeah. But in other cases, like for a book club crate or whatever, I could see that because you, somebody's checking it out and then there are multiple people that are going to grab those. And th so they are circulating to more than one person. Um, but if it, if it's a kit that has a microscope and a book and a CD to go in it, it's probably going to one person. Should those all, should it be three circulations or should it be one circulation? That's a that's another. I think that that's maybe one of those circular conversations that there is no resolution, and I don't think there's a right or wrong answer. But then it also comes back to there does need to be a standard answer, whether it's right or wrong or not, because if we are comparing ourselves, and that's what all these statistics are supposedly doing, saying that we're comparing to one another, then we're not actually getting apples to apples at all. So there's a lot of things where we're not actually comparing apples. To I know, apples. right? <laughs> right. If you do want to have separate circulations out of a kit, one could say, then you can always designate those as parts and say that uh, an individual just wants to have the microscope 
and they can check that as a part out of the kit. It's true, but that's only if you're willing to separate, to, to circulate it separately. That's right. But you Which, don't have to go through the bother of conjoined items and call correct. it a foreign microscope. Because well, it, who wants to check out a foreign microscope? I mean, it depends. <laughs> it might be foreign, but it might still be good. <laughs> well, and that's the thing. It, the word itself has a connotation that has nothing to do with what it actually means. It has nothing to do with it. It has to do with database structure. It has nothing to do with actual place of origin or anything like that. Yeah. But it's weird. Uh, yeah, and, and to actually use that that word out in the public with no context almost seems well, it seems really irresponsible to me. <laughs> but that's just me. It's totally jargony. It's like if we're, you And know, not even librarian jargon. No. That's not librarian jargon. <laughs> it's database jargon. <laughs> it is 100% developer jargon. 100%, yes. Um, so that's conjoined items. Pretty glad I brought that up. Um, but it does actually inform the way I'm going to continue talking about it during training, as in, we're not going to really talk about this. I would advise you not use it until we have more um, yeah. actual consensus in the consortium because it, yeah. And I will say, too, from everything that I've seen out in the world of evergreen development, Nobody cares about conjoined items right now. If somebody decides that they do care and they want to develop it and make it more user friendly, um, then that's cool. But there, there are so many other things that are on the, the horizon and on the, that to-do list beside that. I'm gonna get way far away from that. And the thing is too, I, I'm beating a dead horse, there are other ways, as you have, several of you have mentioned, to handle those, those items, those, those um, kits, those groups of things. Eve asked too, has anyone used conjoined items in their local ILS before they migrated to Evergreen? Or is this an Evergreen issue? From my experience, it's an Evergreen issue. I think it was something that was, um, developed fairly recently. It seems like it, I mean, it wasn't something that was available in the staff client that I remember. It seems web client plus. I don't remember if it was in the staff client or not. I, I just remember that it's never been particularly useful <laughs> from the, the time it was created. I feel like, I mean, this is definitely a functionality that other ILSs have, but I, I'm not familiar with whether it works better in other ones. If you used it in Millennium in the university library, and what, what was the context for that use in the library? I think that the use that makes the most sense to me is something like a book club kit. Um, CD with book. Okay. I, I kind of feel like the bound with thing is one of the reasons why it gets yeah. used in university libraries too. Yeah. Where they'll have a, like a, a bunch of journals that they've, that they bind together yeah. or something. Yeah. Or CD ROMs when they're, oh, CD ROMs. I remember those. <laughs> And they were a pain to catalog, just saying. And conjoining was not a hard thing. Eve, have you tried it at all in Evergreen, tried to use conjoined items, or has that not been something that you've had to, um, to do in the public library? I'm getting comments from Lynn who is not actually in this meeting, but can hear me talking. And so she's sending me comments. She's talking about um, serials, which is exactly what you said, serials being bound together. Um, so yeah, it, 
And I think that that maybe is that they're really in, in a public library, there aren't a lot of reasons to use conjoined items. It does make more sense that it would be in an academic library if you have those journals on things that are bound together. There are a few little things in public libraries where I'm thinking like the Bob books, they did a bound together version of those and things, but anyway. So we have seven minutes. Is there anything else about um, problem items? And I did, while I'm waiting for um, you guys to come up with something, if you have anything, I do want to go back and, and link one more thing in the procedures manual. That is such an old thing. Any other things related to problem um, items? Or is it just good to know that other people have problems too? <laughs> so I, I actually, I must have closed that out, but I, I'm gonna actually link a thing in the follow-up email related to um, the fields and things as well. But thank you again to uh, Anna and Sarah and whoever was involved with getting that, that resource um, for the icons up. I think that is really super helpful, Christy. And so the other thing that I do want to let you know, and maybe it's because it's front of mind because we had one this morning, is that the cataloging committee meetings are held quarterly. The next one is September the 3rd, and you don't have to be a committee member to attend it. Now, if there's voting, you have to be a committee member to vote. But there is so much work and conversation that gets done at those meetings. If you have the opportunity to listen in, I would encourage you to do that. Um, what the topics that are discussed are always topics of currency and work gets done. I know not every committee meeting is the most engaging thing in the entire world, but the cataloging committee meetings really are worth your time to listen in if you are, um, and, and provide feedback as, as well, if that's appropriate to the topic. Um, and out of that meeting, I will let those of you who were not there this morning let you know that there are several chapters that have been completed for the um, cataloging training manual. So if you have not visited that recently, let me actually link this here. Um, and then if you just scroll down to the cataloging training manual, click on that, it's gonna open up a list of chapters. And there are, it looks like there are only six more that need to be completed. And that's, that has changed pretty dramatically over the past three, four months. So um, go in there and check those things out. There, a lot of work has been done. And then, that will be updated again as soon as we go to the ne next version of Evergreen, which should be next month. It will not be updated by the time we go to it. So um, go in there now and then it will, will be quickly turning those around again. So there's that. Anybody else have anything to say or ask or whatever? Oh no. <laughs> Just so you know, we're probably gonna say, hey, conjoined items, let's talk about something else. I'll send out a qu the questionnaire and it will, it will have a place on there for additional topics. Unless you really desperately wanna like talk about conjoined items more. I should have an encouraging look on my face. Hey, conjoined items. Do you cover conjoined items in the CAT1 training? Just very briefly to say, look, here's a button. 
and this is a, a workflow and there's some information in the training manual but you probably aren't going to use this but if you do there's this and if you get stuck put in a help desk ticket <laughs> nobody ever puts in a help desk ticket for that ever <laughs> google it <laughs> google. <laughs> Awesome. I just thought we talk about Siamese twins. Oh. Okay. All right. Thank you, everybody. Have a good rest of your day. I'm going to check and see if I can, if we have protests today, if I can actually get out of the parking garage. Have a great day. Bye. Bye. Bye.